So let's try building a model of our 3D printer nozzle assembly and see where it takes us in terms of the transient response. We have four temperatures that we're interested in. The temperature of the heater, the temperature of the nozzle, the temperature of the sensor, and the ambient temperature of the air around them all. And we'll start off with all of them equal to 25 degrees Celsius. We need to know something about the heat capacities of each of them in terms of how many joules it takes to increase their temperature by one degree Celsius. So let's start off by saying that that whole larger nozzle assembly block takes about 10 joules per degree Celsius to uh, increase its, its temperature. The heater is smaller, so it takes less, let's say about one, and the sensor smaller still, so let's say about 0.1. Now these are all made up numbers, but they will combine to replicate the actual behavior we see in the real assembly reasonably well. We need some approximations for how well heat is transferred between the three different components as well. The heater is tightly coupled to the nozzle block, so it heats it up really effectively. The nozzle doesn't uh, transmit heat to the air around it nearly as effectively and the transmission of energy to the sensor is very low, mostly because the sensor is really small. Let's guess that the maximum output of our heater is about 100 watts as a good starting point, and then we'll need to write a function to allow us to track how all of these global variables change with time. At any point in time the heater can be on or off or somewhere in between. So that frac value will be the fraction of total heater power. We can then take one step through time, whatever's happened since our last time step, and see how the values change. The first thing we need to know is how many seconds has it been since last time we did a time step. Because how long it's been will determine how much energy we've put into the heater and how much energy has moved around between the components since then we can get a value for what the new temperature of the heater is going to be by starting with the old temperature of the heater, looking at the energy that comes in from heating it, some fractional value between 0 and 100 watts. Then we need to allow for transfer from the heater, that little cylinder, into the larger nozzle assembly. So if the heater temperature is hotter than the nozzle temperature, then Multiplying it by the heat transfer coefficient from the heater to the nozzle will tell us how much heat is going from the heater into the nozzle, or in this case negative because it's going out of the heater and into the nozzle. Then for that energy, that's a rate of change, that's the watts, so to get it into joules we have to multiply it by delta T. To get it to degrees Celsius, we need to divide by the heat capacity. So that'll tell us what the new temperature of the heater is. And that's just a basic Euler's method type calculation. I'm going to put a condition on here that says that the temperature of that heater can't get hotter than 300 degrees Celsius. Let's pretend that it's got some kind of an internal safety cutout. Now for the nozzle, we do the same kind of heat balance calculation. The new temperature of the nozzle is going to be the old temperature of the nozzle, plus any energy that came in from the heater to the nozzle, minus any energy that goes out from the nozzle to the ambient surroundings, to the air, minus any energy that goes out from the nozzle to the sensor. Finally, we can calculate a new temperature for the sensor. It'll be the old temperature of the sensor plus whatever energy was added to the sensor. So that's the increase in the sensor temperature. And we're assuming here that the sensor isn't in contact with anything else. So it's not gaining or losing heat from anything other than the uh, larger nozzle block assembly. By waiting until the very end to assign the new values to the uh, main variables, we make sure that we aren't using a mixture of new and old values in our calculations up here. So now we need a loop function that will call step 3dp and set the value of frac, the fraction, to determine how much heat is being put into the system. So first let's figure out what our targets are. 
Let's say that our target temperature is going to start off at 25 degrees Celsius. If it's been uh, more than about five seconds, then we'll increase that target temperature up to 205 degrees Celsius, a reasonable printing temperature. And if it's been more than 150 seconds, so two and a half minutes, we're going to bring that target temperature back down to zero. We need to know what fraction of, of heating we're going to be applying. Let's start off by assuming it's going to be zero, the heater's off. But if the sensor temperature is lower than the target temperature, then let's turn the heater on. So this is really simple on-off control. This is the kind of thermostat control you might have on a household heating system. Let's call our function up here with this fractional value that we've set that's either 0 or 1 and that should calculate new values for all of the temperatures. And finally about every half second let's print out all of those temperature values so that we can see what's going on. This compiled and uploaded for me just fine on a first try. And we can see that the heater temperature is fairly hot and it's taking the nozzle and the sensor some time to catch up. Ambient temperature is staying at 25 degrees. So let's try it with the serial plotter display now. So we can see the ambient temperature here staying at 25 degrees Celsius. The heater is quite hot. It's going up well above our set temperature of 205. And the nozzle block assembly is rising quickly. The sensor is taking a while to keep up. It's not fully caught up. So I think we might get a little overshoot beyond what we're hoping to get. But now the sensor temperature has got up to 205 and the heater switched right off after a short time at that maximum that we set of 300 degrees Celsius. But as the sensor temperature comes back down again, the heater goes back on and the nozzle temperature starts rising and then it falls again. So we're seeing some changes happening over time uh, and the transient, the initial transient looks a little different from this one but these two are starting to look very similar in terms of their behavior. So with this on-off control we aren't able to get a constant value for the red temperature here, that's the temperature we actually care about, the temperature of the nozzle. And part of that's because our sensor isn't detecting what's going on fast enough to be able to respond and control the heater well enough. I'll speed some of this up because we can think faster than the uh, 3D printer can heat and cool. All of this worked for me on my first try compiling it here. That's because I was copying my code from another version off screen that took me quite a while to work the bugs out. Now that the printing is done, we're seeing an exponential decay of the temperature, typical first order response, as it comes slowly down towards the ambient temperature, cooling off. And the closer it gets to ambient temperature, the more slowly it's going to approach. So this exponential decay is typical of all the first order responses that we'll see in every temperature measurement that we do. Well, what can we do to make the system perform better? One possibility is we might reduce the heater power. It'd take it longer to heat up, but maybe it won't overshoot as much. The system is slower to respond, but the oscillations don't seem quite as big. We could also improve the performance by getting better thermal contact in between the sensor and the nozzle body, so that the sensor will tend to keep up better with what's going on. Notice that even with the green line following the red line, the sensor temperature following the nozzle temperature very closely, we're still getting some oscillation. If we introduce something a little more complicated to our control, we may be able to get a tighter performance. What I'm doing here is instituting some proportional control. 
so that the fraction of the heating is going to depend on how close we are to the target temperature. So if we're within 10 degrees of the target temperature, it's going to reduce the amount of energy that's going into the heating. And it won't uh, go below zero because, of course, we can't put negative current into the heater to cool the nozzle. So let's try that one. It looks very much the same in the initial phase because the heater is still on full blast. But as we get closer to the target temperature, the heating level goes down. And as a result, we get a much smoother response and an almost constant temperature. You'll learn a lot more about this kind of approach later on in an automatic controls course. Maybe this better control strategy would let us get away with our slower sensor and our higher power heater. Let's see what happens this time. We get an initial transient overshoot, but things seem to be getting better as time goes on. The temperature of the actual nozzle assembly is smoothing out and only varying up and down by a few degrees. The more intelligence we can build into our code on our microcontroller, the better the physical performance of our systems will be. The result will be that at relatively low cost, zero hardware cost, just some more time spent coding, we can have a far better product if we are using a more intelligent control system. And that's one of the targets you're going to be working on throughout your degree. Working smarter to produce better products that meet consumer and industry needs better.